I'm in a unique position to have a level of influence on my community. And what I post does not mean that I support everything that's being said or everything that's being done or I'm campaigning for anything. All I do is post things for my people in my community and those that it's actually going to impact. Anybody else that has criticism and obviously wasn't meant for them. Just when we thought we left anti-Semitism in the past, we've been exposed to a few folks who've proven to us just how far we need to go to stop the hate. Kanye, for one. But this video isn't about him. In today's video, we'll talk about Kyrie Irving's anti-Semitic behavior and how the NBA commissioner met with him regarding that. So make sure to stay until the end to learn all about it. First up, Adam Silver meets Kyrie Irving. I get through collective bargaining. We want to see where our new media deals come out, but then we'll turn back to um, expansion at some point. Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, spoke about his meeting with Kyrie Irving, the Brooklyn Nets star, for the first time recently. But here's the problem, folks. He didn't really elaborate too much on what was actually said. He didn't really give us a lot of details regarding it. The meeting actually came after an unusual event. So Irving was suspended for sharing an anti-Semitic film on social media. And after that, Silver met him. And what Silver has to say is, well, shocking. Despite the evidence, he claims that he doesn't really think Irving is anti-Semitic. He specifically stated, I met with Kyrie earlier this week. I personally, based on what he said directly to me, know that he's not anti-Semitic. But I think there's a process that he's going to now need to go through. I think he understands that. He even claimed that this is something that he's been involved in proactively and that it's an incredibly unfortunate situation. He also claimed that he believes that Irving understands what went wrong and he's now working with the Nets to improve himself. Uh, okay, we believe you. With everything that's been going on, we think the situation needs to be taken a lot more seriously than it is right now. Next up, actions have consequences. You know, it's an everyday uh, commitment, so family is one of my priorities, always has been. Earlier this month, Irving was suspended for at least five games after endorsing an anti-Semitic movie on social media. And then, of course, in classic Irving style, he refused to apologize. Uh, and uh, that's not all. He even refused to condemn anti-Semitism. Folks, we'd like to tell you that that's all he did, but nope. Then he refused to answer messages from the Nets owner, Joe Tsai. This guy really dug himself a hole, didn't he? And then he had to apologize, but he didn't want to, but he had to. He eventually apologized on Instagram after his suspension, but that doesn't really matter, does it? Not unless the big bucks stop coming in, which is exactly what happened. Nike suspended its deal with him. Now, Silver has stated that the Nets will decide when he can return, but it'll be in consultation with the league, so they can't just pick and choose a date of their liking. They'll have to collaborate with everyone else. The franchise has reportedly, and reportedly is the key word here, we're still not sure, given him a few steps to complete before he can return to playing full-time. What are those? Well, first, he has to issue a verbal apology. Oh, and he has to condemn the anti-Semitic film that he shared. Then, he has to share that apology on social media. After that, he needs to complete sensitivity training and meet with Jewish leaders in the Brooklyn community. Moving on, the list goes on. Everything that we just mentioned isn't even that big of a deal. It's something that he can easily do. The next two things are where it'll get tricky. First of all, he needs to meet with Sai. That doesn't sound too daunting, but consider this. He's his boss, who writes the checks, who he ignored for such a long time. And then lastly, he's required to pay $500,000 to anti-hate causes. Now, this one will sting, or will it? The bloke's worth $90 million. It's probably a drop in the bucket for him. He made $33 million in 2021. We really don't think he'll care. Whether or not all these requirements are fulfilled, we can't say for sure they'll work. Like, yeah, he'll pretend to complete the steps to continue playing. We feel like he should be punished properly, but apparently many famous folks would like to disagree with us. Now, not everyone's happy. Yep, you heard that right. If you're sitting wondering that, wow, those requirements aren't even that much, then you'll be surprised to know some folks think it's all too much. Those folks who aren't happy with it include LeBron James, but we'll get to him later in the video, and NBPA Vice President Jalen Brown. And although Silver himself didn't say much, he did claim that all of this is being discussed at this time. Come on, man. Why you gotta be so cryptic? He stated that the Nets are trying to look into what's appropriate, and he also acknowledged that what really matters is that Kyrie's remorse is genuine and authentic. He doesn't believe that the best results will be achieved by shoving these conditions down his throat. And yes, we do agree with that, but he also needs to be punished appropriately, so a precedent is set for other NBA players looking to engage in hate speech. What's more, Kyrie may have apologized, but it's quite clear how he feels. Because when he addressed reporters after the situation, he refused to show any contrition for his own behavior. Like, come on, man. You just promoted a movie that contains verifiably false information about Jewish people. And then when he was asked whether he was surprised that his actions hurt people, he deflected, blaming the press for not talking about slavery enough. This is all right. Yes, the press should really be working to end racism, but this wasn't about that. This was about anti-Semitism. Now, the point is, he's trying to be pro-black, which is absolutely great, but he needs to realize that he can easily do so without being an anti-Semite. Considering his massive platform, he can really 
really help the African-American community, but then again, he can do some real damage to the Jewish community. While he should highlight all the atrocities against black people in the past and all the atrocities they face now, he really shouldn't be doing so at the expense of Jewish people. Now folks, let's talk about how LeBron James has defended Irving and how he stated that his reinstatement requirements are excessive. First and foremost, LeBron defends Irving. He has since uh, over the last, I think, today or was it yesterday, he apologized. Um, but he caused some harm. And, um... I don't think it's unfortunate, but... Taking his thoughts to Twitter, James defended his former teammate. He claimed that while he doesn't believe in sharing hurtful information, the thing is, Kyrie should be allowed to play since he's apologized. And while we understand where James is coming from, we disagree with him. A low-effort, forced apology doesn't really mean anything special, and it doesn't really mean that all the hate has left his heart. However, James thinks that he should be playing, and at the same time, the net should be making an effort to teach him where he went wrong. He also stated that he's not the person that's being portrayed. The interesting bit is... James, who spent three seasons and won a title with Irving, didn't really get into the anti-Semitism bit. He didn't talk about it once. He just said that he should be allowed to play. That's all. Sorry, LeBron. We had expected a lot more from you. And folks, that's not all. There's a reason why we're a little confused. LeBron himself criticized Irving earlier when talking to the press. Because when he apologized, James acknowledged that it was too little, too late. While he apologized, he claimed that he caused some harm and that was unfortunate. He even stated that he doesn't care what color someone's skin is or how tall they are. What eventually matters is that he can't respect folks who say harmful things. So it doesn't matter um, what color your skin is, how tall you are. If you are promoting or, or saying harmful things to any community, I don't respect, I don't condone it. Do let us know in the comments below what you think changed his mind. But now, let's talk about the folks on Twitter and how they feel about the whole thing. Finishing up, how's Twitter treating Irving? Well, first of all, things got chaotic. As you all are aware, Elon Musk bought Twitter and gave everyone the ability to have a check mark for just $8 a month. How does that relate to Irving in this whole situation? Well, what ended up happening was many people made fake accounts pretending to either be the Brooklyn Nets or some sort of a publication. And then they tweeted things like, Kyrie Irving has been released from the team, which is not true. So this kind of kept him trending for a long time. Unfortunately, we saw a lot of anti-Semitic tweets as well, and we saw a lot of folks rushing to his defense. Some people used Nike's call to cancel their contract with him to criticize the company. Users wrote statements such as, since when does Nike care about ethics? And many folks took this chance to remind us of Nike's labor rights violations in their factories. And then of course, how can we forget, there were memes. A lot of memes. Many joked about the fact that Irving somehow always finds his way into controversy. But it really was shocking to see the number of people who came out in support of Irving. That's a wrap for this video. Do you guys think that the requirements for Irving to get back to the floor were too harsh? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.